currently our aggressive expansion is not very much with a lot of these people over here in fact it's zero with a lot of people um annexing serbia is going to give us quite a large amount with uh, other christians or with orthodox uh not so much with christian or with catholics so um possibly and, and this is something that i had gotten some comments about aggressive expansion it uh, basically works as sort of a um it establishes itself in a certain location and spreads out and it dissipates over time but uh i hope you guys are all having an absolutely wonderful day and welcome back to the uh learning e4 with the ottomans here in e4 with me but uh, i hope you guys have been enjoying and i hope you've been learning uh, if you have been make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know uh, any questions you may have or anything that you learned today and uh you're thankful for because I appreciate that sort of feedback and if you'd like me to uh, expand further on various details that i've mentioned but i haven't necessarily talked about in detail enough leave a comment down below but uh, yes yeah, so ae is affected much more by people of the nations um that you're annexing or taking provinces from state religion so orthodox nations will care a lot more so you can see here i bet all these orthodox nations are going to join coalition wallachia gaining a ton Mamluks gaining a ton or gaining very little. AQ gain, losing, gaining very little. Venice, though they're ordering us, gained just a tiny bit. And Albania gains um, a bit, but not as much as Wallachia. See, Wallachia gains almost 50, whereas Albania gains only 30 and they're neighbors. So that uh, goes to show you the importance of making sure that you spread your AE out amongst religion groups as well. And that's a nice way to do it. Because what I'd like to do is vassalize these guys who you can see here, Venice will gain quite a bit more than anyone else. So Venice is going to be an issue for us. But uh, the thing is, is we intend on going to war with Venice before too long. So before we unpause, though, we should make sure that we are building up our Navy, which we are, which is very good. And uh, Miltech, we're going to wait. There's no point in taking Miltech. If you're not going to get innovativeness, there's no point in taking it ahead of time unless you know for a fact you're going to need it. For example, this next tech is a tactics tech. It could be advantageous for us to take it ahead of time, but the fact that this war is 6,000 enemies means that I'm not necessarily too bothered by it, right? I think that makes sense. So as far as Crownland goes, we want to make sure we're able to take this as often as we can. So in 68, we want to try to be at peace around that time. And uh, we are going to begin sieging these guys down while they come over here. Oh no, anyways. <laughs> They're uh, building up, though. Looks like um, Bosnia is over here hiring up some mercs. But yeah, they're going to head down into my lands, and it shouldn't be too much of an issue because this 14 stack can head on in and uh, catch these naughty, naughty boys and uh, stack with them. Meanwhile, we're going to get them full occupied, and it should be pretty straightforward. Very good. Have these guys carpet siege down over here. Occupy every province you possibly can. That way, they cannot pop any more men out of the ground. You can see here Bosnia is fielding some men, so being mindful of that. Ooh, okay, so we get our first, um, what is this thing called? Our first um, age objective. So age objectives go as follows. The most useful one generally is the decreased aggressive expansion impact, especially when you're blobbing very early like we have been. However, if you take a look over here, the Ottomans get a special siege ability bonus, special age bonus, and this only applies to four nations. So you see Venice gets one, Dan Denmark gets one, Portugal gets one, and the Ottomans get one. 33% siege ability is crazy strong. We're going to take that, and then we'll take the um, Justified Wars next. As far as other useful ones in this age, generally all of them are going to be situational or useful in certain situations. But this one here, transfer subjects at half cost, is very useful. Uh, for example, a lot of people use it for, say, if you're um, England and you take this one here, you can attack Denmark and take Norway for half off. And if Sweden has you know lost a couple of provinces for whatever reason, you could take them. Uh, there's various other ones. I think you can steal Naples from Aragon if you do it fast enough. So there's various reasons where it would be useful. But now take a look here. Well, we're not in charge of the siege here, but you can take a look here. Our siege ability, our siege checks are 23 days, and this isn't a, a woods province. So it's uh, quite useful. I need to get these guys. Uh, I'll have these guys hang out around the homestead here. And uh, so I'd also gotten a question, uh, a good question, I think, about the map modes that I use. So Let's take a moment to review those. So in this first, in, in, and you can have them set up however hotkeys you prefer. And you can actually remap these buttons here with this guy that I had shown before. So I have it set to Q, W, E, R, T. And then I have control Q, W, E, R, T. That way I can affect all these guys with just 
five different buttons or six different buttons, right? So in the first one, I like to do fort level. I think fort level is a is an S tier mod, mostly because it shows fort zone of control and it applies to your enemies as well. So it will show what their zone of control is. So theoretically, uh, since we have these three forts here, it is impossible for anybody under any circumstances to march through here and to get onto this fort until they've sieged down at least one of these forts. So that's very useful. Simple terrain, S tier map mode, very useful. I know I've explained it a couple of times, but very nice because it shows the terrain but it also shows rivers in between provinces if there's a blue line in between provinces it means there's a river crossing if you're going from this province to this province but not this province to this province so very nice unrest self-explanatory it's a very useful map mode uh, over here i have political of course imperial which is just nice to see what the hre looks like your states and territories which is useful to see what states you have um you can also do that in the macro builder and then i also have the religious leagues which will come in handy later on um and trade I you have the my economic ones grouped together. Trade development is a very nice one, and uh, trade goods, which ties into trade, of course. So I like those ones. And then here I have coalition. These are sort of my diplomatic map modes. Coalition shows your AE, and you can also click on other nations. And this applies to most of them. You can click on other nations to see how the map mode looks for them. Uh, diplomatic. So you can see here it shows you all of your claims and your cores. We have some cores over here in Albania, and we will likely go for those soon. And your truce map mode, and if they have green lines, it means that you have a con uh, cast a spelly on them. They, these guys, we have a truce with them, so they have lines through them. But uh, so we have a CB on them, but we do not have we have a truce with them, so we cannot declare war. So very useful. Religious map mode, obviously very useful. Technology map mode, I like to see this because it kind of shows you if you say uh, once you get to I think it's Diplotech nine or ten, you can uh, yeah nine you can study technologies. So this map mode is really useful for that because you can um, steal technology. See, so yeah, I could study the, from them because they have better technology than me. And that's quite useful. Institutions is nice. It's a little buggy because it doesn't show. You have to like click on and click click on a province and then click into the water. But at a quick glance, it's quite useful. It does the same thing as this button here does. So pretty nice. Uh, culture map mode is situational. It's not super useful, but it's nice to look at every once in a while. Areas, religions, and subcontinents. Nice for uh, looking specifically at missions, I think, is tends to be the one for there. Metropolitan I keep in case I'm playing as an Orthodox nation. Devastation is a very useful one because it also shows prosperity. If you're trying to maximize and you get as much prosperity as possible, which like I said, prosperity is very useful because it gives dev costs, but it also gives 25% goods produced, which is substantial. That's a lot. So that's a good one. Edicts map mode is nice because, it, see, like right here, you save a little bit of money. Uh, we're going to dev that up. I said that we were going to dev it up, but uh, we're waiting on uh, burger loyalty. So soon, TM. And then um, over here, revolution, just useful once the revolution comes around. Military access is a very useful one because it allows you to see where your enemies could possibly be coming from. See, these guys, if they wanted to, can march all the way up through Poland, down through Moldavia, into my land. So quite nice to look at. Great projects is useful as well. And uh, colonial, if you're playing as a colonial nation. Colonial and trade regions, so another useful one if you are colonizing. And autonomy is nice because it shows you like areas in our country that have less autonomy. So you can see here over here we have very high autonomy compared to what we probably should. So, and that's because we conquested it, and um, it's not the correct culture. This stuff is all the correct culture. So when you annex it, it's a lower autonomy. And over here I have player map mode just because it's nice every once in a while to look. It basically just highlights you and your vassals as one color. Uh, this is dynastic map mode. Not as useful, it's more situational. Useful when you're a uh, Catholic or Christian if you're going for a personal union. So you can see here von Habsburgs are over both Austria and Hungary. And then the manpower map mode. This is a nice one as well if you're trying to see basically where kind of what valuable provinces you have in terms of manpower. So hopefully those are useful to you guys. I felt like it was worth explaining a bit. So we're going to try to check these guys down, but it's not actually a huge deal. So I'm going to show you a nice little trick here. This siege is taking a bit longer than I'd like because Crimea is in charge of the siege. If you have a vassal that is in charge of a siege and you want them to give it to you. See, I have men here and they do as well. All you do is you go to their, um, you go to their, your subjects interaction tab here and you tell them to be passive. And when you unpause, they will hop off that siege. But then you tell them, you know, go back to being whatever. I tend to tell like medium to small vassals to siege. Uh, and then he will, you know, head over and siege this down. Another nice thing, I think this is an art of war. You can set priority provinces for various subjects or other belligerents in the war. If I click on here, this menu will pop up. I think generally it shows up over here. 
This is all Artemis UI. That's why my game, my UI looks different than yours. So tell him to go over there. So now he should just be lining over for um, uh, Celia's capital and siege them down. And you can see we have much better siege ability here than we did before. And uh, it's good, best to abuse the guns of Urban as much as you can early on, especially considering that we don't have cannons yet. You don't get cannons until Miltech 7. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting until the ahead of time bonus is gone and uh, we can annex or take this tech for much cheaper. It goes up by one, but it goes down by 10 every year. So ends up being a net of nine, right? All right. So military reforms, a nice event here. Um, so let's take a look. We're working on innovative ideas. So we're not going to be taking any tech until we can take this anyways. So no big deal with that. Uh, that being said, it means we're going to max out on mill mana pretty soon here. So whenever you're looking at stuff like this, you say, okay, well, well, we're actually not getting any mana from that. So this is fine. So we could get two army professionalism and either galley combat ability or infantry combat ability. And which one would we rather prefer? Well, let's take a look here. It's 20 years. Galley combat ability would be super useful because we intend to go to war with Venice. Though infantry combat ability is really good. So I think I'm going to go with uh, half and half. No, you know what? We get the army professionalism no matter what. We have a stronger army. I'm going to go with the galley combat ability. And and this is situational because we're going to be, we're planning to go to war with Venice in the near future. Genoa won't join them actually. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This might be a good opportunity for us to get to war with them right now. You know what? I think we're going to do it. We're going to declare this war with the anticipation of uh, fighting them off. So let's get over here first off and blockade them from pulling any of their men off their islands here. That nine stack is going to get beeline for over here. And uh, as soon as we can piece out this war, we would like to. So get these armies grouped up. That way we're not going to get attacked. So we're at war with quite a lot of people over here, but this is fine. Looks like Venice is mostly just allied to a bunch of OPMs who I'm not too worried about. So I would like to get this. Uh, if we can wait till next November, we will. But that means we're going to go over... Um, our limit here. And so you can see here, it says you can keep up to 100 or 1,135. The reason why you can keep over 999, which is the base is because the institution tech penalty, it doesn't say it anywhere, but it raises your maximum. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to save devving until we get there, until we get these guys up over 60, but it looks like it's going to take some time here. We almost have prosperity there as well. So we're going to wait on the prosperity before we do anything. All right, let's kill off Celia's army here. And there we go, Radical Reform. So this is a really nice event that you can get when you have an um, Inflation Reduction Advisor and a Trade Efficiency Advisor. And what it does is basically you can take the Mercantilism and lose a stab. That's stupid. Don't ever click this one. This is dumb. Um, five Mercantilism is nice, but one stability is not worth losing IMO. You can fire one of the advisors, the other advisor, or both advisors and get mana for it. So it's a lot of mana, 400 mana total. I value both of these advisors. Um, so what I want to do is I want to keep them. In order to keep them, you fire them. And if you fire them, they're not in your court. You can't kick them out of your court if they're not in your court after the event is fired. It's a little gimmicky, but there you go. And you get 400 mana for free, and then you just rehire them. Super easy, right? So you traded money. I traded about 80 ducats for 400 mana, which is significant. Statistically significant. Here we go. And that extra mana makes it so we can take tech there. Uh, even cheaper. So this this idea right here is one of the best ideas in the entire game, in my opinion. Uh, tech cost 10%. Again, that's 180 mana per round. So it's basically 180 mana every 12 years. So very strong. All right. So these guys are ready to get pieced out as well. We need to get Celia out of the war. And it looks like we're going to end up having to occupy them before they're going to want out of the war. Let's get our siege guy over there. See if we can win that sooner rather than later. And uh, catch out as many of their smaller stacks as possible. Okay, Venice is landing some men over here. Venice is landing a lot of men over here, actually. So those guys will be here. They will be there on the 29th. And I would not be there before them. So, sadly. But uh, they don't have a general, which is really good for us, actually. So what we need to do is see if we can bait them into taking a bad fight. And again, we come over here and we say, okay, your siege ability is nice, but uh, I would prefer you to get off of it and let me siege it down. Let's actually say, I want you to come over and siege that down instead. And that's a, that's a hotkey that I, I'm not sure if that's in vanilla, but it's X for me. So you just click a province and you click X and it will bring up this menu here. 
So let's uh have you guys not siege this down anymore. There we go. So they got off, and now we got uh, 18 day siege ticks here. That's pretty good. So sadly, as soon as these guys pull in a general or pull annex this province, they're going to pull a general onto that province or onto this army because it will be friendly controlled territory. So let's uh, see if we can scorch some provinces and maybe bait them into that. So a little bit of a little bit of micro will go a long way whenever you're fighting this. So here we go. We can now take tech. As far as institution goes, we are close, but not super close to getting it. So not worth worrying about. So sadly, we're actually going like, to lose this. Um, as soon as we integrate this, the devastation in these two provinces will be considered. You know what? Okay. So what we're going to do in this war is we're going to. Oh, it's just slightly too much. If I were to separate piece them, it would be 24. They have two cores on uh, Herzegovina. So I am... Maybe it's not in our best interest. We co-belligerented them, but I think we'll come back for them later. Instead, I'll take all of their money and we will farm some prestige from them. Uh, break off your rivalry with him and your alliance with them. And might as well break off all of them. The prestige, I know I go over the limit, but what it does is it takes away prestige from them. So that's very useful. As far as Serbia goes, we will piece them out with a full annex, which will not lead to a coalition because we're already at war with Venice. So they can't join a coalition if you are uh, in a war with them. So if you have devastation in this province, it will bring down your prosperity at two each month. The best way to avoid that is to dev. You can't dev a province that you do not have stated. So you have to state this up as quickly as possible. Yoink this dev and core that all up. We don't have much admin to spare, so we're going to end up needing to, you know, work on that over time. Um, so, yeah, it looks like taking this tech is going to be our best bet. And you can see here it is only 516, even though we're 16 extra percent. Stacking those tech modifiers is really, song, really solid. And uh, we want to upgrade our infantry whenever you can do that. It's always good to do that. So, yeah, they have a lot of men. They've got 9,000 here. So that's 24,000 of their men are already here. So a large chunk of their men are already here. These guys are not actually suppressing anything that we need to worry about. So I'm going to head over and bring our army over here. And then these guys will come over here and start working on sieging down Venice. Now, as far as Gallic, as far as naval dominance goes, we do have naval dominance, which is awesome. However, I'm going to keep these guys blockaded in here because until they siege down Athens, they can't cross that straight into my land. So we're going to wait on that. Look at this. So they have good defensiveness in this province. They have a defensive advisor even. Good on them. So we have surpassed QQ as a rival. They are no longer a valid rival. So that means we cannot embargo them for free. Uh, embargoes are just a nice way to hurt your enemies economy while also gaining a little bit of pp and you can see here we eclipsed qq so we gained 10 so pretty solid very solid actually and since we uh declared war in venice we gained an extra 10 as well so lots of good things happening here so these guys are attacking me this is kind of dumb because i scorched the province always scorch scorching is overpowered so these guys are going to head in and stack wipe themselves they might this little stack here might consider reinforcing but uh yeah nothing will happen to them so that was really dumb on their end so well done. <laughs> yep, they teleported a little one-star general over here. Understandable. Now, I think it's um, probably in our best bet to just get over here. They have one maneuver. I'm going to recruit another general. I'm going to recruit another general. Five maneuver, much better. Since we're ahead of time on Miltech, I'm okay with uh, having a few extra generals around. No big deal. Let's uh, core up the stuff that's giving us the most uh, issues. We're not going to end up getting prosperity here for a while. Uh, this one's got the fort there. Because devastation will go down based on um, if there's a fort zone of control in that area. You can see here, if we go to our fort map mode, all these provinces will be losing devastation at a much accelerated pace. But the Zeta here, it's going to take a long time. So what you want to do is you want to add a dev. Because deving actually reduces devastation. A lot of people don't know about that. So this might look like we're losing, but we're going to reinforce. They're not going to have anywhere to flee to. Oh, actually, it looks like they do. Who do they have access through? Ah, uh, they have access all the way through here. So that's fine. 
we're going to take this province back real quick come down and wipe out this nine stack because if they don't have anywhere to go they will just get wiped so it's quite useful let's have you guys head down here and let's have the other half head over here start getting these guys out of my lands and then meanwhile we're over here sieging down venice's homeland we need to get negro ponte because that's the province that we um are claiming in this war so quite useful so here you go these guys will come across and uh lose a stab for no reason those events are my favorite and there you go we stack wipe them so let's just occupy these provinces so venice has lost seventeen thousand men to my 10 it's quite good we have men to spare as well they have a little bit of men, they have men to spare as well so all is fine we're gonna stack wipe these guys quickly if you out out over outnumber them that heavy it's just gonna it's just how it's gonna happen so there you go we stack wiped them and uh we sacked treviso which is really awesome so basically this event here happens every once in a while whenever you siege down a fort what it does is it allows you to either trade money for professionalism or lose prestige so basically it's like if you are having issues with your economy and you don't want to take out a loan like this but it's almost always worth it to click this 100 ducats for five army professionalism is crazy that's five years of drilling your entire army or five generals 250 mil mana so very worth it in my opinion um and now the issue is is we will likely take out a loan here so if we want to avoid that there's a couple of things you can do but um i wouldn't recommend doing this unless you have a piety interaction which we do and uh, we've already taken our tech, so we're not going to be taking any techs in the near future except for maybe admin. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click that button there. Click that button there. And I've explained before why, but basically what that does is that allows you to trade your... Um, trade your um, legalism. Here we go. So here's a nice battle. Trade your legalism for... Um, whatchamacallit? Money. So... We outnumber them, but remember, we have really good galley combat ability, especially considering the fact that we took this guy here. I had somebody who said that they prefer the shipboarding. I understand that. I find the shipboarding more of a burden because whenever you do take it, you tend to capture a bunch of ships. So our galley combat ability is very solid. We are sinking a few of their ships here and there. We're losing ships, but they're losing a lot more than we are. Look at that. They lost 13. We lost one. We probably captured. Yeah, we captured two. So we lost one net total ship pretty good i'm gonna have these guys head over here and i'm gonna have these guys um scorch triviso and we're just gonna sit there for a minute if they want to attack me they can uh so the state firearms regiments state firearm regiments is is a decision you can take whenever you have over 25 uh professionalism or what is this 20 professionalism i generally don't do it basically it raises land force limit modifier and allows you to drill your armies you get get um drill faster whenever you drill your armies I don't know. I'm not very keen on it. I think it's a little dumb because 15% army for or um 15 per 15% um maintenance is uh quite heavy. So this fort up here is pretty good. We're uh, still coring this up, but uh, in the meantime our prosperity is just tanking. So tragic. But this is a woods fort, so that's useful. It's definitely useful. We are meanwhile going to come over here and blockade this province because if you don't know like i said blockading will help out with this take a look there if you're not blockading it you get a minus two we actually got a natural wall breach how good is that and uh again a to detach damaged units so they have reinforcements here i'm uh gonna ask if uh crimea would attach to this stack doesn't look like they're interested so what we're gonna do here well we haven't cored at all you can't um you can't um state up a province unless you have if you have active cores uh, being made. So we're gonna have to wait on that. I was gonna put the defensive edict on there, but even then we're good. So here we go. Yes, good sieging on Corfu. Oh, we got another wall breach. Goodness gracious. That's uh, that's like very uncommon. With no cannons, sieging down forts is a pain in the butt. So I'm, uh, I'm thankful for that. What we're trying to do is I'm trying to, um, you know what? Let's just um, get the cannons or get the cab rather leave behind some units and get these guys over here to join up a few extra cav to flank them with we've won the siege of corfu very good so i'm just gonna have this these guys start running around and sieging down a bunch of this stuff these guys are now gonna get kicked out of corfu and go and get killed so easy enough look at that very good 
Sunk nine more of their ships. And now take a look at that. <laughs> the Venetian Navy is no more. So these guys fled as soon as they saw, they heard the footsteps coming and they ran. Just great. So what we're going to do is we're going to get these guys up here. And uh, we're going to start sieging down the other people in the in the in the war. I like to stack legalism, so I'm going to do that again. Keep an eye. I see this 10 stack here with very low morale. What we're going to do is we're going to be sieging this province. They're going to get kicked out into this uh, the Straits of uh, uh, Toronto. So that is a stack wipe. Well, it's not a stack wipe for some reason. But anyways, they're just going to come right back over here. So it's no big deal. Now, uh, these guys are guaranteed by Venice. So it's probably smart since we have cores on their land to attack them, especially considering that we have armies literally right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this guy, this stack here. As soon as we take that province there, going to sink their navy, go in for the monthly repair tick. It's just a nice little min maxi thing. And let's come up here and blockade Venice. That will allow us to get onto Venice, which will allow us to uh, start consolidating this area over here. And you can see our war score is going up quite quickly. So we have claims on these two provinces. So we're going to take that. I'm also going to take Crete and I'm probably going to take Corfu. And realistically, it would be in our best interest to also take Rhodes if we can. That way we don't have to worry about them. Um, what's, the, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, trying to fight us again or braiding us is the word I was looking for. So. Okay. I have claims on these two provinces, so I will take these two as well. So. Decent bit of conquest. You can see here that the aggressive expansion is getting to be a bit much. Um, however, Venice will have a nice long truce. Herzegovina, mm, I think we have claims on them. We do not, sadly. So basically, you know, just more of this AE management. Uh, Naples, Ragusa, Mamluks have a truce. AQ might join, but we're going to wait to the yearly tick anyways. Wallachia has no allies really. And we don't have any claims on them. So in order to try to skirt around these coalitions, what I'm going to do is going to attack a couple of them. Uh, Ferrara will join them. I don't particularly care about that one. So with Venice, we're just going to have to occupy his capital here. And here's a nice little thing you can do. If you're ahead of time on mill, which we are, and you are blockading with at least, I think it's 100, um, 100 cannons or, you know, quote unquote cannons, 100 ship cannons, per fort level, so 100 in this case, since it's a level one fort, you can spend mill mana to barrage, which essentially just gives you a wall breach. It's quite useful. So I'm gonna do this. Hopefully we don't get attacked by this uh, Venetian stack here. But as soon as we occupy Venice, we'll likely be able to peace out, which would be great. Let's have you guys come over here. Onto Brescia. Have these guys head over onto Verona. There you go. So Venice is not feeling too good. We're probably going to end up not being able to take too much because, uh, oh shoot. Yeah, we got to be mindful of that. This is a mountains fort, so. But yeah, look how fast these siege ticks are in Venice. We have no spy network on them. All right, there we go. So, as soon as they flip to low enthusiasm, hey, check it out. Just like that. So, if we wanted to, we also would probably want to take some money. And uh, realistically, I will. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get onto a couple of people. Now, if we stand on Ferrara's capital and blockade him, we might be able to piece them out, which would be nice. Close, but not quite. So we will siege him down. No big deal. Now, as far as this one goes, I don't really want to risk getting anything else occupied by them. So on the monthly tick is when it cal calculates their willingness. I'm just going to, I'm just going to piece them out. Uh, the aggressive expansion is pretty bad, honestly, but we have tr long truce with Bosnia. Genoa might join our coalition. Wallachia, we plan to attack ASAP, and uh, the Knights won't be able to join because of truce as well. Albania is going to get integrated, so I think this is fine. A little risky, but uh, I'm willing to do it. And uh, everyone else over here is ready to get... There we go. We cannot core up this one because... He's got provinces here, which is fine. So these guys over here are probably going to get black flag. Not quite, actually. So let's see here. Take a look at your mill access. We don't have mill access through Mantua, but we can get it. So we will. We won't be going over our limit either. So we're also going to need ah fort, fort zone of control. Okay. So Milan is at war with a neighboring ally. Hmm. If Milan won't give us mill access, that might be an issue. 
let's improve relations with a couple of people and see if we can prevent a coalition from firing. So, like, these people are going to join. There's nothing I can do about it. Herzegovina, possibly. We could probably improve with Herzegovina. A coalition is likely to fire very soon. Or not fire, but uh, begin pretty soon. So we finished coring up Zeta. No, we're very close, though. And in order to prevent any more prosperity loss here, as soon as we finish the core, you just do a dev click. One. One single dev click. It's uh, I think it's 9 or 10% per. Oh, 5% per. So two dev clicks right there. And uh, now we are no longer losing prosperity in this state. Oh, I didn't see this one over here. Well, <laughs> so much for that one. We'll get it eventually here. So these guys are over here and uh, we're going to siege down these guys, and which is fine because basically all that means is since they're making us siege them down, we just get an opportunity to, um, to um, what's the word I'm looking for? Take money from them. So whenever we piece them out. Innovativeness is nice. Innovativeness for true faith, falling to the true faith is probably good. The earlier you stack innovativeness, the better. And with innovative ideas, we're gaining extra. So, and uh, we can now embrace institution. So once we have the uh, appropriate financials. So we'll do that. And we're getting our cores finished up. Sadly, once you get this province occupied, it's hurting our economy quite a bit, quite badly. Um, now, I'm also going to turn off these forts over here. And we're going to have this navy come on over here. Because we're going to end up needing to siege down these guys. All right. They attacked me, which is kind of dumb. That is their entire navy. Very good. Let's have these guys head over here and wipe them out. Because we're going to full occupy them. And we might as well kill off their navy. It's just more enemies that we don't have to worry about in the future. Okay. These separatists are going to get handled. Hopefully before they take that province. Yes. Very good you guys over here kill off this three stack no more scanner bro he's uh long gone by this time and uh very good so we're waiting until we can get a claim on these guys and meanwhile hopefully that nobody joined our coalition nope they have not so we're going to get a claim on them and uh the reason we're getting the claim is not because i want to take the clay because based on our aggressive expansion we're, we're likely not going to be able to it's just to give me a justification to go to war with them so you can see here, we now have justification, which will allow me... I was building Spy Network on Herzegovina. I clicked the wrong button there. That's okay. But it gives me justification to go to war with these guys, which is all I needed. And then these guys over here will get pieced out for all their money. All their money. And then might as well farm some prestige from them and I get a nice long truce. Again, even though you're going over 100, it's fine because what it does is it takes prestige away from them. Having everyone around you be weak is usually a good thing. So let's um, cut our mill access here. For some reason, we still have mill access through these guys. We don't have a return province that's going to allow us to get there. Get black flag. There we go. We got black flag. Generally, you get black flag whenever you are, have a province, have men in a province that you lose uh, mill access through. Or if you declare a war while you have men in another nation's land. All right. So these guys are going to attack. We're going to attack them. The so colon, here's a Govina. I don't think there's any reason to co-belligerent them, so. And let's just do something like this here. I think they've got a six stack around here somewhere. Got to be mindful of that because they'll, they'll gank you. There's a five stack there. Get you guys over here. These guys are sie getting sieged down now, which is good. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. So now basically you're starting, to, hopefully you're starting to understand that sometimes Oh, here you go. So we're getting attacked here. They'll be there on the first. But if we scorch it, they'll be there on like the fifth. So we have time to reinforce with a different army here. Yep, very good. So they're attacking us. This is Grasslands, so it's probably not actually a good one-to-one. -one. So what we're going to do here is we are going to send over some men. And uh, yeah, so this is fine. Uh, lose a bit of money or local goods produced in a province. I'm okay with the lo local goods produced falling down a little bit. These guys are heading over to Herzegovina. Have you guys do something like this. Don't let Herzegovina build up an army. And meanwhile, we're just getting these guys full occupied. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. So these guys, you can see it's very cheap to take this land because it's Reconquest CB. Which uh, you can see over here, if you hover over that, it says Reconquest. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually, if there's a way to see exactly what the modifiers are. 
but with a reconquest CB, oh, right here, 25% AE for provinces that you have cores on. We have cores on these two provinces, so it's basically free to take it. We can full annex them, take all their money, and you don't even have to core it because it's already a core. So, very nice. Now, I'm going to have these guys just sit here and uh, suppress rebels because uh, it looks like most of them have already popped, but we've got a couple of Albanian separatists here. Vast, or any nation that gets annexed, when they are annexed, they will pop out a couple of uh, separatist zealots. Their their uh, army will become separatists, rather. So, um, I suppose I'm okay with stating this. It will just help out with our autonomy. And more Janissaries if we do decide we want them. Now, as far as this goes, these guys are now over 60 influence. All right, so in a few months, they're uh, going to go a little bit higher here. And these guys just attacked me, but it's on... Their province, it's their capital. Oh, it's not their province. So they took a minus two right there. Yes, very good. Well, that's awesome. So that means those guys are going to run over here and get stack wiped. Easy enough, right? So what this does is this allows us to peace out Herzegovina quite quickly. Um, the stack is handling those rebels. Very good. And meanwhile, these guys are just going to occupy these guys, which is pretty easy, right? Don't want to lose sailors for no reason. So just dock up your navy when you're at war and you don't need them anymore. Teleport a general into a stack before you go into any battle, basically. It's just good uh, good measure. So right now, basically what we're doing is we're just letting our AE tick down. Nobody's joined our coalition because we're keeping truces. If you take a look at our truce map mode, everybody around us has truces for the most part. Uh, anybody that could join us. Hungary is a subject. Subjects cannot join coalitions. So hopefully you guys took away a bit of uh, good stuff in this one. We're cleaning up our borders here in, uh, in um, the Balkans. Which is nice. Uh, we're going to separate piece you guys out for sure. Might as well yoink some dev. It costs a little bit of AE, but um, we're going to probably be taking a look over here next. So a little bit of time to let this stuff simmer down over here. Again, these guys, we don't actually intend on taking any clay. So what you do is you take all their trade power. Actually, they're in uh, the pest node. So maybe we don't need their trade power. But what I will do is have them break off their alliance with them and uh, give up their claims that they have on me as well as yoink a little bit of dev because, you know, 10 AE is not that much. Five prestige is good. Cost me 15 diplo. That's fine. Um, looks like they are holding out, right, for a little bit, but it's fine. We're about to siege down their capital or uh, their fort they have here. As their war exhaustion goes up, they become more and more willing to uh, peace out as well. Next idea... Once you finish this out, you get 25% advisor cost, so it's probably worth just rushing through. And uh, being behind on admin tech isn't necessarily that, that punishing. So I'm just going to do that. The Aegean Archipelago. But yes, if you guys learned something today, leave a comment down below and let me know what it was. Uh, because, and uh, if there's any questions you have, feel free to leave them below. Warriors Do Not Read Books is an annoying event that happens every once in a while that just gives you increased tech cost for admin and diplo. Nothing you can do about it. Just uh, accept it and uh, let it happen. And now we will be able to piece these guys out. And uh, that is fine. That money that we're making is going to bring us even closer to embracing the institution. And uh, I would like to do that if at all possible. I'm gonna turn off our forts here, turn our military maintenance down a bit and get these guys over here. But uh, yes, that is about all I've got for you today. So I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Chewy Shoot and I will catch you guys later.